The Apple Vision Pro doesn't have a crazy number of competitors, but the ones that it does have are pretty serious, and it's getting more serious. What's up, guys? If you're new here, my name is Nate, and I bring you my biggest take on the news of the day. And after yesterday's video, let's say we'll aim for in 10 minutes or less. Uh, Firstly, in the news, there was a bunch of stuff that happened today, a bunch of great articles that dropped, a bunch of news ahead of CES 2024. Um, just a few pieces of news for you before I get into what I think is the biggest story of the day. Um, the Apple Vision Pros are arriving at warehouses around the country right now, which is awesome news. Um, Mark Gurman confirmed that uh, Iris, if you remember that's S-I-R-I, -I, but I'm not gonna say it and blow up your phones, Iris uh, will get emp un empowered with AI and that Apple has been testing IX, I think is how you pronounce it, it's LLM since early 2023 to upgrade Iris. That's really fantastic news. We might have to do a whole video on that at some point, but I'm just guessing with CES 2024 coming this week, there's no way. There's no way, right? Uh, let's see here. Windows is reportedly going to be putting a major update out this year that might be Windows 12 or it might be Windows 11 upgrade, um, but it's going to be brim with AI. It's going to be AI all over the place. Um, I looked into the features that we know about so far that are rumored and none of them are uh, new features you've never heard of before, but definitely plays on what we've been discussing the last couple of days on this channel about uh, how building in AI in the ecosystem of your computer system, whatever you have, whatever your technology is, the Apple ecosystem, if that's what you have like I do, um, does have some huge advantages. Um, of course, CES 2024 is coming and it's uh, just two days away now or tomorrow actually. So yeah, it's tomorrow, um, Tuesday. Um, and then as the tech world pumped about possible innovations, you know, it's always a really fun way to start the year, in my opinion, to just see what kind of crazy tech comes out. A good friend of mine is going to be there along with a quarter million other people who are flying into Vegas uh, for uh, the CES. So I'll definitely be sure to let you know what he says, but the early reports are suggesting that AI is going to be all over it. No surprise there. Um, Samsung is supposedly going to be announcing tomorrow or today should have announced today, we'll see, I might, might have missed it, um, that a foldable display that's going to open and open inversely. So it's gonna to open towards you and away from you, which is kind of interesting. Um, so it'll be fun to see what that kind of looks like. It's gonna be for like a tablet application. And many of you guys, interestingly, in the comments, uh, had lots of really cool ideas around the iPad foldables rather than the cell phone foldables um, in that foldables video. I can link that below if you'd like. Um, but uh, all interesting technology that we're gonna to get to look at this week. It's gonna be a ton of fun to be uh, in my position uh, watching the news and sharing it with you. Um, with my my little spin and my take on it, but there was uh, a few articles that came out today talking about Xreal's Air 2 Ultras, um, those AR glasses that they just announced, and that has me pretty... It has me thinking, it has me contemplating how this might affect the Apple Vision Pro and the way that the articles are written uh, would suggest their feeling on how it's going to affect, affect Apple Vision Pro. So I want to go ahead and look at that with you right now. Um, firstly, um, I should actually show you that on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about here, huh? Um, so. Um, this article from The Verge, X-Rail's new AR glasses are aimed at the Apple Vision Pro. Um, that was an interesting take on it. And uh, that was by Addie Robertson, a good article. Um, I'm not 100% sure if I agree with the premise, but we're gonna get into that together. Firstly, what do we know about the X-Rail Air 2 Ultras? Um, firstly, they're AR glasses and their main competitor is Meta, but they think um, it's soon to be Apple. They they consider themselves to be bridging the gap similar to like, like what Meta's doing um, in that they're, they're in this several hundred dollars range and they're trying to, they're getting a little bit more expensive, but they're offering this in-between of a full VR headset um, that has mixed reality built in um, to actually something that looks more like glasses, which you know a lot of people are excited about. I, a bunch of you in the comments agreed with me that if Apple released a pair of those, we'd be all over it. Um, some of you didn't, that's cool. Love your opinion, keep sharing them 
don't feel bad sharing your opinion. Um, there is a huge price jump from the Air 2s, the current X-Real Air 2s, and some of you guys in the comments have a pair. Um, they cost about 400 bucks retail. The new Ultras, Air 2 Ultras, are gonna be $700. Um, they have an increased field of view. They can track six degrees of freedom. So if you don't know what that means, um, you have the three axes, right? The X, Y, and Z axes. So that's um, forward, backward, side to side, up and down. And then you have rotation on each of those axes. So that would be yaw if you're into like a drones or I, I teach underwater robotics is one of my classes. So, um, so we talk about yaw all the time. You have uh, pitch, of course, and then you have roll like a barrel roll of a, of a airplane or something. So um, it can track all of those movements of the user, which is good. That's cool. Um, adds dual 3D cameras. Um, what else? What else? Increased field of view goes from 52 degrees to from 46 in the Air 2s. 1080p per eye. Um, they are going to be a little bit more uh, heavy than the Air 2s, but compared to some of the big headsets that a lot that are out there, not crazy heavy. Um, there was an interesting quote about them. I wanted to uh, pull up on the screen for you. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. Apple's 3499 Vision Pro is rumored to launch in February and Apple has promised that developers will be able to create spatially immersive experiences alongside projective flat screens. Meta's $499 Quest 3, which debuted in last October, combines full-fledged virtual reality with mixed reality apps like digital tabletop games. Both headsets are pass -through, use pass-through mixed reality, which overlays digital objects on a video feed. So you're actually looking at a camera, but it displays what's outside um, in front of you or what would be in front of you rather than the direct pr projection that Xreal offers. Although Meta is working on project a projection-based AR glasses more similar to the Air 2 Ultra and Apple is likely doing the same. We've talked about in on this channel, we've talked about uh, some rumors around that kind of work that Apple's doing. Um, and according to Addie Robertson, she makes one good point. Well, <laughs> she makes several good points. I'm sorry. Um, according to Addie though, um, from The Verge, these are pointed directly at Apple and the Vision Pro. And that one point I was going to mention related to why Addy would say that does make a lot of sense. They went out of their way to use the same phrase that Apple um, has been really tied to, which is spatial computing. So if you can kind of use that same kind of language, it does send a message that you're trying to appeal to that audience. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Good point there. Um, but... Honestly, even after reading that article, as well as a couple of other ones that are out there about the X-Real Air 2 Ultras, my opinion is basically the same. It really hasn't shifted for me, which is new for me because I am a very flexible person and I do find myself moving back and forth a lot on stuff. Um, there is a gap between the Vision Pro offering and what AR classes are currently able to offer at this moment. And, and I think... Um, in minimum terms of computing and application offerings, right? At the very least, that is a difference between what the AR glasses we have available to us right now with the Metas, with the Air 2s, um, and what, you know, the Meta Quest 3 even, what the Apple Vision Pro is supposed to have. We still don't know exactly what all the apps are going to be, but we definitely know that there is a huge difference um, in terms of available applications and options there um, and computing avail availability as well. Um, the x Air 2 Ultras require you to be connected to a device. You can do to connect to a lot of different types of devices, like you connect even to an iPhone 15 supposedly. Um, but um, again, you're, you're not doing all of that computing on board um, where the Apple Vision Pro is doing that computing on board. At least that's what it promises to do. Um, I do believe that these types... <laughs> What's up with this effect? I don't know if this effect is coming through on you. It's like when I do a thumbs up, it sees it and, and it's, I, I didn't realize that was an effect built in here. I should probably turn that off because it's kind of cheesy, but whatever. I do believe that these types of AR glasses carry a competitive advantage when it comes to price. Um, there are simply just going to be more buyers in the market for a pair of AR glasses at that price point compared to buyers in the market for a very expensive pair of Apple Vision Pro um, uh, Apple Vision Pro headset, right? 
That doesn't disappoint me at all as an Apple fanboy because I actually think that that could be a huge advantage for Apple. I know it sucks that not everyone's gonna get their hands on them and there's definitely concerns around being able to get your hands on one if you're one of those folks that have 3,500 bucks sitting aside that you cannot wait to drop on it. Um, we'll know more very soon, by the way, tons of rumors saying that, uh, that they're gonna get an announcement this week this week, and the reason I think they're going to announce it this week, if I'm totally honest, this is purely speculation, but I think it's to try and steal some of the attention from what's happening at CES, because you know, your boy Apple isn't going to be at CES, unfortunately. I don't know why I said your boy. Please forgive me for saying that. That was embarrassing. Um, I don't see people using the Air 2 Ultras in the same way that people are using the Apple Vision Pro. It's not the same thing. I do agree though. However, even though they're totally different, I do believe it has the potential to take some of the market share of, of the extended reality space um, because it is a f more affordable. Um, that being said, I think the Apple Vision Pro is geared toward a specific person. I think it's geared toward a specific use case um, and it's more, uh, it's a different type of clientele. So that does work in Apple's favor, I think, um, in the long term, especially if they can get different versions of the product that have lower cost options. We'll get there in a minute. But um, I still think Xreal versus Meta makes the most sense to me as, uh, as, as an apples to apples comparison. I think you're looking at the Meta Ray-Bans versus the Xreal Air 2s. And the Xreal Air 2 Ultra might be a massive um, improvement on what the Meta Ray-Bans currently offer. Um, I'm not a total expert in the Meta Ray-Bans and I do not own a pair. So I have to say, you know, this is just my speculation. If you have a pair of both, Geez, you should definitely let us know in the comments. I know several of you have mentioned the Air 2s and uh, owning those, and I've heard of other people owning the Meta Ray-Bans. Maybe the both of you should talk in the comments about your experiences. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how the X-Real Ultras, or Air 2 Ultras compare to that. We are yet to see, we have to be fair, we have to be fair in the tech world, we have to be fair. Um, we're yet to see what the Vision Pro will actually shake out to do, what it'll actually be able to be, um, for the everyday person, for specific applications in the business world, et cetera. Where am I at on time? Crap. See, I'm already over 10 minutes. See what I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me with this video podcast about technology and the current tech news of the day. Uh, Feel free to let me know in the comments what stories you thought were most interesting. And if you find other stories that you think, man, we have to cover that, definitely let me know. I'll be honest with you, I am a little biased and uh, a lot, a, a, I'm a lot of biased uh, toward Apple and Apple related technology and adjacent technology that relates to Apple. But I'm also a tech educator and I'm all about technology. I love learning. So please feel free to share and encourage me in any direction that you would like. It's no promise that I'll do it, but you know, there's that option, of course. As always, think different, stay crazy.